Good morning, and welcome to Holy Family Church as we celebrate the 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We are God's. We belong to him. Our primary allegiance is not to a particular nation, kingdom, or institution, but to God. We belong to him in whose image we are made and whose law is inscribed in our hearts. We must give back to God what is his, thus we give him our love, our first fruits, and our very selves, in union with Christ. Today's Mass is being offered for the souls of Russell Andrew Brown, requested by Diane Genereux, and Antonio Butanozzi, requested by the Klein family. Let us please stand and welcome Father Jaron. Now thank we all our God with heart and hand and voices who wondrous things has done in whom his world rejoices who from our mother's arms has blessed us on our way with countless gifts of love and still is ours today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. Good morning. So, snow is already here. And whenever it's very cold outside, I think about those people who doesn't have a place or um, not able to sleep in a safe, comfortable place. And we know, uh, I personally know there are lots of play, uh, people who don't have a place to sleep at night, especially this cold time. Uh, so I would like to ask you to pray for all those people uh, less fortunate, in many different ways. Uh, let us think about them. Also, prepare ourselves to celebrate this holy sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always confirm our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him, and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gate shall not be closed. For the sake of my servant Jacob, and Israel my chosen, I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that all may know, from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is no one besides me. 
I am the Lord, and there is no other. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come to his courts. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the peoples with equity. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. From Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the Church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Christ Jesus. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel. <coughs> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodian, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show difference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to test? you hypocrites. Show me the coin used for tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, whose head is this and whose title? They answered, Caesar's. Then he said to them, give therefore to Caesar the thing that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. The Gospel of the Lord. I was trying to prepare my homily since yesterday morning. I wasn't sitting anywhere, but it's in my mind. This is the reading. Uh, I definitely want to relate or get what's in today's gospel speaking to me. And I wanted to search. I was searching and I didn't get anything until 9.35 this morning. And when I got that, I was pretty emotional. Very emotional because today's gospel is very much known for the politics. Uh, the Herodians and the Pharisees, they came to test Jesus. 
And it's very obvious they wanted to make Jesus sound like he's against the emperor. And that is kind of the context behind today's gospel. And that is, when you read the gospel, that is the first text that comes to your mind. But then I was rereading, and I don't know how many times I was reading since this morning. I saw a Jesus. I saw Jesus there, very emotional, a very emotional Jesus in today's gospel. There is that one sentence there, why are you putting me to test? And Jesus asked that a few times in his life. One, the very beginning of Jesus' life, when the devil took him to test after 40 days of fasting. And just before, and the second one just before, at the Garden of Gethsemane. And both were, the first one was not so emotional, but was very tiring. And the last one was very emotional. Though the things that they telling about Jesus, teacher, we know, the people who came to Jesus, they know that Jesus, you are sincere. You teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show no difference to none, one, for you do not regard people with partiality. And to do those things in your life is not easy. And everybody around Jesus knew Jesus was a great man. There was nothing that tell, oh, he was wrong in this. Nobody can point out anything about Jesus that he did something wrong. He didn't. Everything he did was good. But still, the people who come, even the people who know that everything he did in his life is pretty good, and they came to Jesus and they wanted to test and how emotional that is. And I'm very sure you can relate. We all can relate in our lives. We try to do so much good in our lives, maybe to our own family, maybe to our neighbors, maybe to our friends. We, our community, we try, you know, people, you are involved in many, many different mystery, ministries here in our parish, uh, maybe in the community. There are many, many things we do in our lives. And when we do good, with good intentions, and when things were not accepted, it's pretty emotional. And that's how I see Jesus in today's gospel. Why are you testing me? That is what Jesus asked them. And then, this is why I consider Jesus as a university. You can go to anywhere, but you can never learn things that you learn from Jesus. You can never learn things from anywhere else. This, these are the things you only learn from Jesus. Why are you testing me? He's very emotional and never lose his composure. And he tell them, ask them to bring a coin, and he teach them with his smartness, with his heart. And then, yes, they, are, they have no, nothing to say. Uh, they have no more accusation. They just left. If I was in Jesus' place, I would have shouted. <laughs> I would have cried. I don't know if I hit them. I don't know. That is, that is me. And I don't know how you would react. You know, you try to do so much good and they come to you and they even, even now they wanted to trap you. That's pretty emotional. But the good news and the good encouragement for us today, if you're tired of doing good in your life, don't look anywhere else. Look at Jesus, how he dealt things in his life. And yes, we all, whether we do good or whatever we do in our life, we all have expectations. You know, expect only that God approves everything, what you do in your life. If, if you are looking for approval for anyone else, most times it can be a little disappointing. So the encouragement should come from God. So look at God. Do everything what you can. Never stop doing good. Jesus never stopped doing good until the very last moment. And that is our God, Jesus Christ. May God bless you.
Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our needs to God, who desires to grant us what we need. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That all clergy may be strengthened and edified by the prayers of the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders of government may be guided by the Almighty in the just use of power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may give hope to refugees and displaced persons without home or country. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Christ may have a place in the hearts and homes of those gathered here. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may rest eternally in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That World Mission Sunday will unite Catholics all over the world in prayer and support of the poor and our missionaries as they carry out their crucial work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of Russell Andrew Brown and Antonio Butazoni, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our loving Father, hear and answer these prayers we offer before you through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. With a humble spirit and contrary heart may be accepted by you, our Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer incarnated by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he entered his passion so as to break the bonds of death 
and manifest the resurrection. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down a spirit upon them like the dew form, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered will willingly to his passion, he took bread, giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and prophesy your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis I, our Pope, and Frederick Cawley, our Bishop, and all the clergy, and these people, and their families. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be choirs to eternal life, may praise and glory for you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Before we share the peace of Christ, it is so funny. Uh, the other day, I got a phone call, 
uh, because one Sunday I forgot to give a blessing for all the children. And one of the child, uh, she asked her parents, why G uh, Father Jarin didn't give a blessing today for us? So our blessings really matters. Uh, so what I'm going to do, we have few children here at, in the, in the, inside the church today, and many more are watching online. So let us give them a very, very special blessing and let our children and young people know we all love you, we care for you, we pray for you. And here we are going to give you a special blessing. Our loving Father, we ask you to bless all these wonderful young people and children in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now let us share the peace of Jesus Christ. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The body of Christ give me safe for eternal life. The blood of Christ give me safe for eternal life. Now it's our time for spiritual communion. As, usually, as usual, Tin is going to lead the prayer and let us all join this communion, uh, spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you were present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and prepare for those gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. So I said one reminder, if, if you know there is someone at home uh, having received Holy Communion for so long and they like to receive communion, uh, as I mentioned before, I can always go to the door and like a door delivery, I, I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, so if you know someone that would appreciate it, uh, talk to them and let me know. I will be more than happy to go and do it. Or any, anything else, anything else, because I know I see you, but I know there is so many that I don't see in person, but you probably see them. Uh, so if there is anything I can do as a priest, please let me know. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and glorify the Lord by your life. Have a great day. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You 